Good morning, buenos dias, buenos dias. Good morning, those who are tuning in, those who are live, and those who are watching on the replay. Praise God that we can have this on the replay for those who uh, don't wake up early in the morning. Angie Gamboa, the first one on. Good to have you. Good morning, Helen. Good to have you. I'm glad that um, uh, that we that people can uh, can watch this on the replay. That the live it just doesn't do live, but uh, that it does. Uh, if you go on the replay for those who can't make it early in the morning, I know it's early. Uh, Grandma Lola is on. Good morning, Grandma Lola. Good to have you. Uh, I know that people um, would like to uh, listen to this, and so praise God. Good morning, Elizabeth Tyson. Good to have you. Uh, I know that a lot of people want to uh, hear this, and so and to get into the Word because it's it's so beautiful what the Lord is, is stirring, what the Lord is stirring in our hearts, because that's where it begins. It begins the the the, the yearning and like I want to, I want to get in my Word. I want to draw closer to the Lord. I want to. Uh, I know, I know, I need to get in the Word. I know that it's so important. Good morning, Jeannie Fisher. Good to have you. Uh, so, and um, but to to have that like instills like we have that desire to want to know more. We know that it's it's uh it's uh it's right for us. We know that it's important. <laughs> we know that it's, it's important for um that the Lord know the, that the Lord says it's important to get into the word. Good morning, Tyson. Good to have you. Good morning, Jade. Good to have you. Bethel and Julie. Good to have you guys on. Michelle. Good to have you. Um, and so we know that uh for, to the Lord, that's what we're gonna get into uh, into today. Into uh we're gonna we're gonna get into. Uh, Exodus chapter 28, we're going to be reading Matthew chapter 25 and 26. We're going to be reading Psalms 31, 9 through 18, uh, Proverbs 8, 12 through 13. And so I'm excited to see what God's going to present to us today. And so look at this, look at, look at uh, what it says in, in Exodus chapter 28, 1 through 43. Actually, Exodus chapter 28. It says, call for your... For your brother Aaron, his sons Nahab, Abihu, Eliezer, and Ithamar, set them apart from the rest of the people of Israel, so they may minister to me and to be my priests. Verse 2, make sacred garments for Aaron that are glorious and beautiful. Instruct all the skilled craftsmen whom I have filled with the spirit of wisdom have them make garments for Aaron that would distinguish him as distinguish him as a priest set apart for my service. These are the garments they are to make a chest piece, an ephod, a robe, a pattern tunic, a turban, and a sash. They are to make these sacred garments for your brothers Aaron and his sons to wear when they serve me as priests. So give them fine linen clothe uh, gold thread blue and purple and scarlet thread and in this portion of scripture right here it says set them apart from the rest of the people so they may minister to me and to be my priests the first ministry the first thing that we do is to minister between you between the lord unto the lord that's the first ministry. Before you're a mechanic, before you're a doctor, before you are a nurse, before you are a salesman, before you are uh, working in the factory, our job is to minister before the Lord, to get into His presence. To the Lord has set the Lord has set these people apart. The Lord has set Aaron, Nahab, Abihu, Eliezer, Ithamar. Set them apart for the rest of the people so they may minister to me and be my priests. And a lot of times, I was just thinking about that too. I, I was thinking about that too yesterday. That a lot of times, some people, they think, oh, Bible study is just for the pastors or just for the leaders because they have to share the message. They have to share uh, what God is, is telling them so they can share it to the people. And so a lot of people, they don't do their personal Bible study and the reason is because they think, oh, that's left to the pastors to do that. That's left to the leaders. That's left to 
those who are or are preaching the word and teaching the word and no our first ministry guys first ministry is unto the lord unto the lord to give god to give god our time our energy to get into bible studies to get into what god is <clears throat> what god is showing us what god is teaching us that's why even to yesterday i, I shared that yesterday it's so important to get um to get bible study material to get a study Bible so that if you're not understanding what you're reading, then you we can dive in. We can dive in and see what the Lord is speaking to us because our first ministry, guys, is unto the Lord. And that's the way God told me. He said, He said, You want your you want your ministry to be effective? You want ministry to be effective? You want to pour into people's lives? You want to help people? You want to uh, get people closer to me? He's like, you draw closer to me. You draw nearer to me. Your first ministry before you are even a husband and a father. What, is, uh, what did we say? It's first, the first ministry is unto God. Then it's for your family. And then is the ministry <clears throat> to others. And if I truly believe that, I got to, my relationship with God has to, has to be, <coughs> excuse me, my relationship with the Lord has to be first and foremost. How my how effective is my, is my ministry around me? How's the, how effective is the ministry that's going to take place that is happening here? If my relationship with the Lord wasn't wasn't like this, then the things that I say are meaningless. The things that I'm, I'm presenting are meaningless. Why? Because if my relationship with the Lord is not is not my my first and foremost important importance then everything else will fall apart everything else my relationship with the family my relation my uh my the ministry and the uh um sharing the word and whatever needs to get done in the at, at the church your first ministry if you want to be an effective nurse may your ministry in the lord if you want to be an effective mechanic if you want to be effective with what you're doing and look, look at this, guys. It's not just, it's not just for, the, for the priests. It's not just for the pastors. Look at this. <clears throat> it says, Make sacred garments for Aaron that are glorious and beautiful. Instruct all the skilled craftsmen whom I have filled with the spirit of wisdom. And so the craftsmen were filled with the spirit of wisdom. And so you see, it's not just for the pastors, but that's why it's so important as we are ministering unto the Lord, that we are filled, we will be filled with God's wisdom. And so you may say, oh, I'm, I'm not a pastor, but you, but we minister. <clears throat> I love what, um, I love what Pastor Andrew said. He said, we need people that are filled with the spirit to be barbers. Because barbers have such an effective ministry. Why? Because those people are sitting down on your chair and you get to talk to them. You get to, to share with them. You, get, you can make the <clears throat> doors open up. If you're a barber in this place, may God bless you. May God fill you with wisdom. If you are a, 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 a nurse's physician, and I mean nurse, nurse's assistant or a, 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 an assistant, May, may the Lord fill you with wisdom. I love Danny Castro. Danny Castro is working at the hospital. And the Lord has used him in such a mighty way. Why? Because he's a man filled with, with, the, with, with, he's filled with the Spirit of God and wisdom. And then as he is, is serving there, as he is working there in the hospital, the Lord is using him to reach the people that the pastors can't reach. Why? Because he has the ability. The Lord has given him wisdom. The Lord has given him the, the, the spirit to go into where he's at right, right there at the hospital and to share and to be a light into a dark world. It's not just for the pastors. The, there at the church, it's, it's training. It's like building so that you can go into your, into, your, uh, into your job. So you can go into your career wherever you're at. And maybe too, excuse me, I just got the lingering cough. 
Praise God. And a lot of times, too, uh, stay-at-home mothers, they feel like, how can I be effective? You are effective by raising up the next generation. And that next generation belongs to you. And so effectively filled with the Spirit of God, raising your children, raising your children. And you may say, what's my purpose? What do I do? Your purpose, your purpose, guys, is to first minister unto the Lord. That's your first purpose. That's the number one thing is minister unto the Lord. And from there, the Lord will, will instruct you. The, from there, the Lord will tell you, this is what you need to do. This is what I'm instructing you to do. This is how you, you minister unto me, and then you're going to minister unto the people around you. You're going to minister to, to be effective. The effective ministry, to be effective in ministry, the Lord, the Lord was telling me, is to preach, it's to share to the audience of one. I remember when I started uh, sharing the word, it was, it was in front of, uh, I think it was about 300 people, Three because uh, our youth was growing, so it was about 300 people that I, uh, I shared the word with. And I was so nervous. I was like, oh, Lord. I'm... And then he, 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 uh, this is what the Lord told me. He's like, you're sharing to the audience of one. If I'm pleased with you, if you are effective, if you are, if you are building that relationship with me, you are, you're sharing to the audience of one. And as I'm ministering unto the Lord, as what God is, is showing me, <clears throat> and look at this, guys. If we read the, the previous portions, M Moses got the, the design. He got the layout. He got the blueprint from what he saw on the mountain, from what he saw in the presence of the Lord. What you're getting, what you and I, what you and I are being filled with, first we need to get into the presence of the Lord and be filled, and then we can be effective. I wouldn't be effective if I wasn't communing with, with the Lord, if my, if my relationship with the Lord was some way off. <laughs> the insight, the revelation, the, the, the wisdom, or anything that the Lord is getting, even this word, I, I, couldn't, I couldn't share it effectively Unless um, my relationship with God is, is first and foremost. What time is it? <laughs> I don't want to go too over. Um, so we're good on time. Because a lot of times we think like, what, what is my purpose? Your purpose, guys, your and my purpose is to, is to be before the Lord. Be before the Lord and say, Lord, will you instruct me? Will you feel me? Even if I'm a craftsman, even if I if I'm just helping out, even if I'm just a person that that was that's going to help the church build the tents, or that's going to help the church do uh, the Hebrew coffees, may this Hebrew coffee come on somebody, come on Helen and John and my mom and uh, Grandma Gloria, <laughs> may that Hebrew coffee build be be filled be filled with God's love and be filled with the wisdom and be filled. Why? Because God is using that as an effective ministry. You may say, what can I do? And look at what, what Liz Castillo, filled with, the, filled with the Spirit of God and doing the, doing the food giveaway. You're like, that's just giving away food. It's not just giving away food. It's, it's, giving, it's, it's, it's sharing. It's, it's uh, ministering unto the Lord. And then her heart, Check this out, guys. This is what she told me. Her heart is, I want to lead the people to Jesus. I want to lead them to Jesus. I want to show them Jesus. I want to show them Jesus through this act of kindness. I want to show them Jesus through, through me giving away the food and praying for them. Last time, she said that she, she prayed for everybody there. She, she just, she said, we're going to pray right now. She's like, <clears throat> everybody that passed by, she's like, I'm going to pray for you. And people were willing. People were like, okay. That's the first ministry, guys. And look at this. How do I know this is confirmation? How do I know that your first ministry is unto the Lord? That you're first uh, getting into the Lord's presence and being filled with Him? How do I know that this is, this is an on-time word? Because look what it says in Matthew chapter 25. Matthew chapter 25, verse 31. It says, but when the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit upon the glorious throne. 
all the nations will be gathered in his presence and he will separate the people as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will place the sheep at his right hand and the goats at his left hand. Verse 34, then the king will say to those on his right, come, you who are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the, for the creation of the world. Verse 35, here it goes. The good that's confirmation. <clears throat> for I was hungry and you fed me. I was thirsty and you gave me a drink. <clears throat> I was a stranger and you invited me into your home. <clears throat> I was naked and you gave me clothing. I was sick and you cared for me. I was in prison and you visited me. Then these righteous ones will reply, Lord, when did we ever see you hungry and feed you? Or thirsty and give you something to drink? Or a stranger and show you hospitality? Or naked and give you clothing? When did we ever see you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will say, I tell you the truth. When you did it to one of these least of these my of these my of my brothers and sisters, you were doing it unto me. Woo! Then the Lord, then the king will turn to those on the left and say, "Away from you, away from you, you cursed ones! The eternal fire prepared for the devil and his demons. For I was hungry, you did not feed me. I was thirsty, you did not give me a drink." I was a stranger and you didn't invite me into your home. I was naked and you didn't give me clothing. I was sick and in the prison and you didn't visit me. And then the Lord will reply, when did we ever see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not help you? And he will answer, I tell you the truth. When you refuse to help the least of, these, of my brothers and sisters, you were refusing to help me. Wow. The first ministry, guys, is unto the Lord. The first ministry, look at the confirmation. And you're like, oh, they did this on purpose. <laughs> the people who did the one-year Bible did it on purpose. Maybe it was the Lord doing it on purpose. Maybe the Lord has a purpose. Maybe the Lord is speaking to us today. Maybe the Lord is speaking to us because maybe maybe you're you're trying to find your identity. Maybe you're trying to find your purpose. I don't know what to do with my life. I don't know what purpose I have. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. Well, allow you and your and the you to get closer to the Lord. And then he will instruct you. And then he will show you. As we as I started. <clears throat> draw even closer, God, what do you want me to do during this pandemic? What do you want me to do during this thing that we're going through? What do you want me to do, Lord? I want to be effective in the ministry. I want to be effective. I want to, I want to minister unto you. And then from the ministry between the Lord and I, and then the Lord said, now I want you to, to share in the morning. I want you to share the word in the morning. And look, it's reaching the nations, guys. It's reaching the nations. And I believe that this is going to grow even more. It's going to grow even more. Why? Because just me, Lord, what are you speaking to me, Lord? What are you showing me? What are you showing me in my own, my, my personal devotional? What are you showing me? And as to what he's showing me, then I can take that. And I said, Lord... You're showing me as far as being a father. You're showing me as far as being a, a husband. You're showing me how to how to how to share how to share your word. You're showing me as far as at work, Lord. What do I need to do? Even at work too, when things are piling up, Lord, I need I need your help, Lord. I don't know how I need your help to to do all these tasks because there's there's a lot of things coming. <clears throat> right now we're busy. <laughs> My partner and I we're so busy right now. It's just crazy. But being effective, guys, your effective ministry will come, right, Bethel? The effective, the effectiveness of your ministry. But you say, I'm not a pastor, I'm not a teacher, I'm not this, and I'm not. 
but you could be that, that skilled craftsman. You could be that skilled craftsman that is filled. You can be that skilled barber that is filled with the with the filled with the spirit of God. You may be that stay-at-home mom, but you are filled with the spirit of God. Right? Lord, I want to start a prayer shall ministry. You're Amen. <clears throat> Do it. You know what's uh that reminds me. Uh there's a ministry that uh they make uh they make uh it's like prayer blankets. Prayer blankets. And then uh it was so beautiful because when my mom was diagnosed before with cancer, she received a, a prayer blanket. These women will make uh will make blankets. But it was being so prayerful, prayed on, and then this specific one, they were they were praying for people that were dealing with cancer, and so as my mom just as she gets cold, she would put on this blanket, and know that this blanket was filled with 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 weeping and crying and crying out for those who are dealing with cancer and to see healing through their body. And that's a ministry that was unto the Lord. But it's ministering to, to my mom. It's ministering to my family. It's ministering to us. And then <clears throat> the second time my mom got diagnosed again, I said, Mom, get that blanket. I said, just get that blanket and just, just put it over you. Just clothe yourself in there. When you feel like you're weak, you feel like you it's, it's, it's a difficult day, just cover yourself in this prayer. Cover yourself. And that's a ministry that, that these women started. And it was from another, it was from another church and it's so beautiful, guys. And you may say, how, how can my ministry be effective? Maybe, <clears throat> maybe the Lord is prompting in, in your heart, right? You can do this and have been blessed with beautiful talents from the Lord. Amen. Right, Stella? To have a beautiful, have a beautiful ministry. Maybe, maybe your, your ministry is to come alongside of a, of a person that's already has a ministry going. Maybe uh, you want to help out with the uh, with the homeless. Well, Smokey, start, he's going to be starting that up pretty soon. And to have that, that ministry be effective. You want to help out. You want to do that. It's like, but first, it's ministry unto the Lord. Right, Violet? Your first ministry, first thing we do is, God, I'm doing it unto you. Amen. Let's get into uh, <clears throat> to Psalms 31. Have mercy. Have mercy on me, for I am in distress. Tears blur my eyes. My body and soul are withering away. I'm dying from grief. My years have shortened by sadness. Sin has drained my strength. I'm wasting away from within. I'm scorned by my enemies and despised by my, by my neighbors. Even my friends are afraid to come near me. When they see me on the street, they run the other way. I am ignored as I, if I were dead, as if I were broken pot. I have heard the many rumors about me, and I am surrounded by terror. My enemies conspire against me, plotting to take my life. Verse 14, but, I love the but, but God. It's so, so beautiful. But I am trusting in you, O oh Lord. Saying, you are my God. My future is in your hands. Rescue me from those who hunt me down relentlessly. Let your favor shine on your servant and your unfailing love. Rescue me. Do not let me be disgraced, O Lord. For I call out to you for help. Let the wicked be disgraced. Let them lie silent in the grave. Silent their lips. Those proud and arrogant lips that accuse the godly. But the but God moments are so incredible. But I'm trusting in you. But my future is in your hands. But you're the one that's sustaining me. You're the one that is helping me. You're the one that is covering me with your feathers. You're the one that if I'm... That's why it's so important, guys. So important. That your relationship with the Lord is getting tight. It's getting, it's getting like... It's getting stronger and stronger each day. Why? Because if you're going through this, if you're going through the despair, if you're going through the tears in your eyes, if you're going through the through the anguish, maybe 
things are happening in your body. But having that but God moment, but God, I'm trusting in you. May we trust in the Lord today. Amen. What time is it? 557. 557, guys. Proverbs 8, 12 through 13. I, wisdom, live together with good judgment. I know where to discover knowledge and discernment. All who fear the Lord will hate me. Therefore, I hate pride and arrogance, corruption and perverse speech. The wisdom of the Lord, guys. To have that discernment. I, wisdom, live together with good judgment. I know where to discover knowledge and discernment. That is powerful. I know where to discover it, guys. I know where to get the rivers of living waters, guys. I know where to get words of spirit and life. I know where to get it. I know where to discover it. Can you say that? Can you say, I know where I know where to find it, guys? It reminds me of the lady at the well. I know where the Messiah is. The one that Moses talked about. I know where he is. He was at the well. And let me introduce you to him. Let me introduce you to wisdom. Let me introduce you. Let me, I know where to discover knowledge and discernment. I know where to discover peace that surpasses all understanding. Amen. May we receive that today. Let's pray. <clears throat> Our Father in heaven, holy is your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us, Lord. Deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. For those who need deliverance today, Father, I pray, Lord, that you would deliver them, God, from any addiction, Father. I pray, Lord, that you would deliver them, God, from fear and anxiety. For you did not give them a spirit of fear, but a power, love, and sound mind, Father. If they're dealing, God, if they're dealing with anger, Father, set them free, God. Deliver them, Father, in the name of Jesus. That you will bring peace, Lord, in the name of the Almighty God, which is Christ Jesus. Thank you, Lord. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Father, thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, may the Lord bless your body. Good morning, Irma. Good to have you. Good to have you. Good to have you. Um, I've been praying for you, too. Uh, Marilu was saying that... Uh, uh, you've been on. Yes, you've been on. I've, I've been seeing you. Good to have you on, Irma. Uh, but may the Lord bless your body. May the Lord bless your labor, your work. May the Lord bless your emotions. May the Lord bless you spiritually. Drop closer to the Lord. And may the Lord bless you socially. May the Lord bless, as you are ministering to the Lord, that he would help you be ministers to other people around you. Because that's the first ministry, guys. You want to be effective. You want the Lord to use you in your job too. May you be effective in the first his ministry. Amen. Thank you guys for joining in. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Si Dios quiere. God bless you guys. Thank you for tuning in on the live. And those who are on the replay, I know a lot. Of, I know people tune in. So I, sorry if I don't say your name, but I know you're on. <laughs> Or just put right there. Just put watching on the replay. Like Grandma Gloria, she if she doesn't make it on the morning, she says watching on the replay. Or Stephanie, um, um, if she does, if she can't make it on, I know she comes on majority of the time on the morning. But if she doesn't, she said watching on the replay, and we'll give you a shout out. We'll give you a shout out, right? Edema, we'll give you a shout out. Bethel and Julie, we'll give you a shout out. Come on, praise the Lord. Thank you guys for tuning in. Michelle will give you a shout out. <laughs> God bless you guys. Thank you guys for tuning in. We'll see you guys tomorrow. See you guys Bye. Bye.